Hello everyone, I'm Felipe Hoffa, Google Cloud Developer Advocate, and today I'm in Johannesburg, South Africa, to meet the city of Nomanini, Delhambi. This company enables microtransactions in various countries around Africa with these devices they created. Dell is going to tell us more about their story and why they chose to build their backbone with Google Cloud. Also, we'll show you how you can use open data and BigQuery to visualize the state of the mobile networks that connect the world. So, join me. It's my first time in South Africa and I think there's so much we can learn about Africa just by looking at what you're doing. Not only South Africa, but Africa. That's correct. Yeah. So, so what Nomenini does is we do uh, build point of sale systems to help uh, remote villagers get access to prepaid airtime, prepaid electricity, and basic banking services, like being able to withdraw or deposit cash. Nice, and Nomenini got into this business just to help people Yes, um, back in 2011 when we started the company, we focused a lot more on airtime. We wanted to get scratch cards out into rural villages, but it's very difficult and expensive to send boxes of scratch cards, which are worth money, into far-flung villages and then collect cash and bring it back to the cities um, to pay for those uh, that airtime. If you wirelessly deliver um, airtime, uh, uh -huh. these vouchers to machines that are in the village, uh, it's a lot cheaper and more cost effective. So people in the villages who don't have a lot of money to start with don't have to travel far to go get essential services like airtime or electricity or and now even banking services. So as the city of Nomanini, you created all of these devices back in 2011, that yeah. was your... Yes, we started yeah. off with a, a terminal that was very simple to use, no screen, just some buttons where you press the mobile network, like uh, Vodafone, and you press the uh, 10 Rand denomination, or, or however many Matty Cash, wherever you are in the continent, and it prints out a slip, and you got a PIN number that you type into your phone. And then you, st you started with the cloud back in 2011. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, before I joined Nomenini, I had my own company and we were doing the early days of Internet of Things and I absolutely fell in love with App Engine because I'm more of an embedded system guy, so what I knew back then about setting up high availability servers was a bit scary, um, so App Engine solved my problem. And then um, when I joined Nomenini, um, I took that knowledge with me and we built up our uh, systems, our backend that does all the transaction processing and the maintenance and monitoring of all these devices on App Engine. Now, to be able to pull this off, you need to have a network connectivity. Yes, that's yes. correct. And how's, uh, how's that working in Africa? Um, so each of our devices has a SIM card in and it links up to um, just the network and it calls a REST API on our system. Um, but the networks, while they're there, they can be a little bit flaky. So getting this, knowing what the signal strength is is very important for us. How can I learn more about well, there's a, a project called the Open Cell ID project, uh -huh. and people with GPSs in their, uh, and data monitors, typically tracking companies, um, take their data and anonymize it and upload it to this open source project called Open Cell ID. Uh, and, and this project then takes that data and figures out where all the base stations are around the world. Can you show me that? Absolutely. This sounds fascinating. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I've got this page open here. This is the Open Cell oh. ID page, and you can see all the these base stations around the world that they've collected data for. Um, I've registered on the API. Um, so if I log in, then I can go to download and can download the latest cell tower data. Um, from this link and what I did is uh, I didn't want to download it onto my laptop and then re-upload it into Google Cloud Storage or BigQuery. So I spun up an F1 Micro, which is a free instance, and I used curl to download that um, the file, which is about 800 megs or so. And then from there, I used um, GSUtil to upload it from that F1 Micro instance into Google Cloud Storage. So here you can see the cell phone tower, it's 886 megs of GZIP data. Data. And, and if then, you want to analyze this, yeah, well, it's not no <laughs> use just like sitting in Google Cloud Store. Yeah. So I use BigQuery. Okay. So what, one of my favorite tools with BigQuery for um, importing or creating a table is you can point it straight at a Google Cloud Storage bucket, and you can use a, uh, point it to a gzip file. You don't even need to um, worry about unzipping it first. Um, I told it's a, a CSV format, and I know all the columns. 
Um, that radio, are, MCC, NAT. Yeah, radio. Um, so it's like GSM or LTE. MCC, mobile country code. So that's the country that it's in. The network is the like uh, Vodacom, MTN, whatever. Area is like the suburb and cell is the unique cell ID. And from there, I imported it. And so I've got this data here. So you can see all the columns that I imported. And if I look at the details, it's at four gigs. So it went from 880 megs no, to four gigabytes decompressed. And it's got just shy of 40 million unique base stations from around the world. I can then have a look at, for instance, this one is finding out the latitude and the longitude and the radio type. So having a look at basically where's GSM, where is the LTE network, so how is the world moving from first gen, second gen, third gen, fourth gen cell phone towers. So running this query, if I run again. So they are, they are uh, grouping here by? Uh, grouping it by the, uh, the latitude and longitude. The latitude and the longitude. So that's just doing some rounding with the, the division there, just to, so we don't get too many data points. And then looking at the case when it's GSM or LTE. And then importing that, or at least visualizing that inside of Data Studio. So, um, so it took those four network types that they've recorded, CDMA, which is the primarily you can see the used in the US and some in the East. Um, the world has moved on to GSM. So throughout the world, we've still got, we've got GSM everywhere. And you can see particularly in Africa, there's a huge amount of coverage with GSM networks there. Then we move over to third gen, so this is like your 3G data, obviously also widely rolled out, but less so in Africa, but there's still quite a lot of 3G available. Um, and then we move over to the fourth gen networks, so LTE, also some in Africa, mostly in the big cities and huge in the east. So LTE is big there, the, uh, Africa's got some catching up to do. And that took me about five minutes to do. Exactly, you downloaded all of this data, you yeah. loaded it into BigQuery and suddenly we're looking at the whole world, how yeah. antennas are looking. That's right. Nice. And can we focus on Africa? What else can you see about Africa Sure, here? So, yeah. so what I had a look at was given the mobile country codes, um, that's the MCC? That's the MCC, the mobile country code. So each country has a unique code, like South Africa's is 655. And we uh, did a join with the mobile country codes with country names. So there's a database that has all the country names and the country codes. And then doing a count to have a look at how many antennas, unique base stations for every country in the world. And taking that, and I wanted to explore that a little bit more. So putting in the ISO code, which is the like a ZA for South Africa or GB for Great Britain or uh, Puerto Rico PR. And then going even one step further, joining that with uh, one of Google's country info databases that's uh, it's available on the internet. So having a look at population data versus how many antennas and seeing is there a correlation between population size and how much a mobile network has rolled out. How many antennas do we have per people? Yeah, exactly, uh -huh. exactly. And that's this division here, the number of antennas per capita. So for, and this is actually per thousand people. So like Australia has got 17 antennas for 1,000 people, right? So if we once again go into Data Studio, we can have a look at what that looks like across Africa. And if we plot that on a log-log scale of the total antennas versus the total population, we can have a look at um, see you know, with the big countries, it sort of correlates with having lots of mobile base stations and the smaller countries with less population have fewer base stations, which sort of makes sense. So there's this linear trend. Okay. And and, but you still see a big disparity with some countries have a lot of antennas. That's right. Like if you look, this is a log scale. So we have a look at a country like the Seychelles. It's got very few people and at 88,000, but they've got, you know, just under a thousand antennas there. And other countries like Chad, which is right in the middle of the Africa, light yeah, the light spot, you know, they've got a, quite a high population, but not widely rolled out mobile network. Uh, and the countries that have, you know, South Africa, Nigeria, Egypt, uh, and you look up at the top here, you know, there's Nigeria, Egypt, South Africa. Um, so for South Africa's population of just under 50 million people, we've got the most widely rolled out mobile network in Africa. And in which countries is Nomanini? So uh, Nomanini is operating in a little bit in South Africa, but mostly in Mozambique, in Zambia and Kenya, and a little bit in Ghana as well. 
And here you can get a look of where you are re getting real coverage, like reported by people. That's right, wow. yeah. Nice. And then you can take all of this data, this is public data, That's and right. you can combine it with your own data. Yeah, so we have huh? a bunch of... Um, diagnostic data that's uploaded to our systems. So if I have a look at one of our, this is a, a particular user in Mozambique. Every minute we're just uploading diagnostic information, everything from user interfaces to here we've got the latitude and longitude of the GPS and importantly the cell phone diagnostic information, the signal strength um, and then we do a survey of the seven surrounding base stations looking at what the signal strength is of the surrounding network as well. All of these devices that you have deployed are reporting you what's happening. That's right, yeah. right where they are. So if a client phones up and says my, my phone isn't connecting or my device isn't connecting, I can't use your system, then we can do an investigation and understand, like, is it a signal problem or is there some other problem? Yeah, and then you are getting this data now into Kubernetes? Or um, Kubernetes? How are you... Yeah, so What's all the, the, data, the data is uploaded from the devices to our service. So some of it is in App Engine and some yeah. of it is in Kubernetes. Um, and from there, it's streamed live into BigQuery. Uh -huh. So that's what we use for some of our analyses. So if I look at uh, selecting the data from one of our clients for today, we've got a ton of data that's been uploaded already. And I can go and look specifically for something like this GSM environment. So I go where? How's the GSM environment? GSM environment for uh -huh. one of our clients in Mozambique. So now I can have a look at all of today's data. And what we've got is this raw diagnostics that's been uploaded. But you know, unless you're a mobile network engineer, this doesn't mean a lot to you, right? So, um, yeah, this is in BigQuery, and then doing, I can use BigQuery's, this is in JSON, I can use JSON methods within BigQuery, I can split on commas, I can pull out very specific pieces of this information, like this is the country code and the network code and the base station IDs, as well as all the signal strength for all these base stations. So that I see you have like a big JSON blob of whatever the yeah. devices are sending? That's right. Yeah, th that's good modeling? Like, um, yeah, so a lot of our data is JSON, especially for this particular table, which is just our event log. It just takes raw data. There's no ETL or anything on it. It's just whatever the device or the, the engineers who build these devices or developers who make the app just want to send up, we send up and we put it into BigQuery. And then later on, once we've got all the data, we can decide what sort of um, questions we want answered. And because it's in JSON and BigQuery can operate on JSON so nicely, and we can extract just the pieces of information that we want and build new data tables over that. Nice, and you can parse all of that in real time. Exactly. With whatever you want to focus on. That's right. Then uh, from there, what I've done is I've pulled out for all of these, those, each, each row here mm -hmm. has got seven diagnostic readings in it. Is so that whatever the modem is telling you? Yes, it's telling me all these signal strengths in the base station. So what I did is I ran one of these queries to extract from JSON and got the, the time, the device that uploaded it, the area, so I, I've, that's the like the suburb, I guess, the suburb ID, and then the cell tower that it's connected to, as well as the signal strength. So closer it is to zero is the better the signal strength is. If it's at m minus 100, it's pretty bad. You're not going to be able to do anything. Okay. So the device knows to what cell tower it's connected. It's exactly. But it has no idea where this cell tower is located. That's right. So if, the, if a client phones us up and says, hey, you know, I don't have good signal, can you see what the problem is? It allows us to have a look at the device and have a look at the signal strength that it's receiving, as well as then join that to the cell, the open cell ID towers. Uh -huh. So given this, I'm doing a join on the cell ID from between the towers databases and our devices database and being able to join. And what we get is for each cell, we get the latitude and longitude of where that base station is, as well as the maximum, the minimum, and the average signal strength that our clients are experiencing on that cell tower. Uh, and from that, we can put it into a dashboard. And this is um, all the cell towers that we've connected to in Maputo. So that's the capital of Mozambique. Wait, uh, is this Redash? Yes, it is, Redash. Oh, okay. I love uh, Redash. It's super for doing the sort of geo-visualization. So, you see, largely, 
This is green, which is good. It means that the uh -huh. cell towers have got good signal strength. In the capital of Mozambique. In, in the capital of Mozambique, yeah. But this one device that I showed you earlier. And these are your devices. These are our devices, yeah. If we, we look at this guy, he's in Maputo, but he is sort of a little bit to the north of the city. So we, we have a look in Redash here, and the north of the city where he is has got you know, it's a bit of yellow and red, so we can explore down and see that there is a cell phone tower that has not got a great signal strength. And because we've got the cell tower, we can then phone up the mobile network and say that in this particular area, this base station has got very poor signal strength for our users. Could they fix it? Wow, well, so you can use your own data to tell the network where they have problems. Yes, because they're not going to report it to you. Yeah. Um, but if we can give them data, that like, then, they, then they have fixed stuff before. Wow, and I would love to learn more about how you're managing micropayments all over Africa, but let's save that for uh, another episode. Absolutely. Excellent. So thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Dale. Thank uh, you for having me. And everyone, stay curious. I'll see you soon. <laughs>